to my channel because Natalie won't <laughs> ever do an intro. But so welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of the stuff that we wish we would have known going through the loss. Obviously, nobody wants to ever have to go through a loss, but there's definitely some things we learned along the way. And again, in the spirit of this channel is to help people through, unfortunately, our experiences, both good and bad. So this is more of the experiences on, on the bad, uh, just through the losses. So one of the big things is, is you know, whenever we found out that we lost the baby, my OB, you know, when she presented the two options, one was to, you know, have the baby surgically removed to do the D&E um, versus, you know, giving birth to the baby, get, getting induced and going into labor. Um, she basically made it seem as if it was, you know, not normal for me to go and birth the child. She kind of leaned very heavily towards you know having the procedure done and almost made it seem that the only people who choose to birth their child are the ones you know who are against surgery or any medical procedures um and that's something that i really wish that i would have known um that it was normal to give birth because you know that's my biggest regret from this whole thing is not being able to birth you know our son not being able to see him hold him and kind of you know, get to experience that and get to see our baby because obviously, I mean, because we had him surgically removed, we did not get to see him. Um, along the lines of that, we also didn't know until after the fact through reading and support groups when I found out that, hey, it's actually normal to give birth to, you know, your dead baby. Um, anyways, so one thing that I didn't know about was the cuddle cot. So a lot of hospitals, they have what's called a cuddle cot and basically it's like, I don't know exactly, but it's some sort of a cooling cot thing that they put the, the deceased baby, the past baby on so that it doesn't deteriorate and so that the families can spend more time with the baby um, at the hospital. Um, and I didn't know that because like I said, my OB kind of made it seem as if people don't really do that, um, birth the baby. And then the other thing that along the lines of actually birthing the baby is I didn't know that we could have done, you know, an autopsy report. You know, it wasn't really something that, you know, my OB had even mentioned. Um, and for us, we never really got an answer. I mean, we had the genetic testing done because that is something we were able to do even though we did the DNA, but that all came back, you know, fine. So we don't really have a, you know, definitive reason as to why our baby passed. But had we done, you know, had we had a given birth, you know, they could have done an autopsy and potentially found a reason, which, you know, would have, I think it would have helped knowing, you know, potentially what happened. And now they keep saying the OB, our OB, but uh, there were two at least involved in this situation and I mean obviously I think this all happened on was it a Thursday I think it was a Thursday so we kind of felt like this mad dash to get things done quickly one because we were kind of concerned about overall health and everything obviously we, we didn't want any adverse health effects for Natalie so we kind of I think rushed through rushed. things um, and that might have been by design by the OBs, but we really, again, nobody explained to us our options after the fact. And by after the fact, I mean, they didn't really explain to us what would happen with his remains. So we weren't, and at the time we didn't even know he was a he, but um, there is an option to do cremation. And from what we understand, most hospitals will do this for free just because of the circumstance. Um, so that that is an option and looking back on it We wish we would have known that because we would have gone that route uh, We did ask for footprints and handprints and we were able to get footprints uh, His footprints were almost exactly an inch in length. So uh, Again, we definitely would have done that and Natalie was really insistent upon photos She really wanted to try and get the doctor to take photos we did not get photos, and I really don't know if any doctor would take photos, but it's worth the ask, obviously, because at some rate, you know, if, if you're gonna go through the procedure, so again, this was a D&E because it was so late, uh, but it, 
it's probably worth at least asking to see what you can get to, to at least have some keepsakes for memories. Yeah, and then along the lines of the photo, so obviously know that, you know, if you do give birth to the baby, a lot of hospitals will free of charge. A photographer will come in and, you know, take photos if you'd like. And I be, and I did lots of reading afterwards and, um, you know, through support groups and even found out that a lot of hospitals will take pictures even when, you know, certain families will say, no, you know, we don't want them. And they'll hold on to those photos because they've realized that a lot of families at the time will not say they can't see the baby. Um, but then afterwards we'll come back and say, I want the photos because I think that's kind of, you know, you may be in shock at first and think, oh no, I can't, you know, you know, see my child. Um, and then, you know, a couple of days later, you really want that. And I think that's one thing I learned. Um, you do really want that. Um, you know, the more days that pass, the more information you want. You want to know exactly what they look like. I know for me, I even, um, sent a, a message to the doctor who did the procedure, I think it was like weeks after the fact where I said, you know, is there anything you can tell me? Like the length. And unfortunately, I don't even think she ever got back to us. So I, I think most likely she probably realized that she didn't do her part explaining things as well as she should have because we could have gotten all that information. I'm sure, at least a yeah. portion of it, maybe not all of it. Yeah, so definitely, I mean, ask for all those things if you do do, you know, the the um, procedure versus the birth, you know, ask for all those details so that they can weigh the baby, take measurements, because they do that, I think, anyways, and ask for details that they can tell you, you know, did the baby have hair, what color was the hair, you know, any information, you know, that you can get, because you're going to want it later, even if you just ask you know, your doctor to write it down. And if you're not ready to look at it, you know, I'm sure a couple of weeks, months, maybe years down the road, you know, you'll want to, you know, take a look at that. Um, another thing that I wish, you know, we would have been told, well, I would wish I would have been told was, you know, this obviously wasn't even on my radar, you know, after, you know, the procedure, you know, I went, we went home and, you know, no one said, told me, you know, that my milk supply would come in. So it was kind of one of those awful reminders, you know, of what you just went through that your body is, you know, ready to feed the baby because it thinks baby was born. Um, and then your milk supply comes in kind of full force and you're kind of left dealing with that with, um, you know, the engorged breasts and you know, not really knowing what to do. <laughs> and so it, it, it was just something we wish, you know, they would have informed us about, you know, prior so that we would have been able to do something proactively to stop my milk from coming in, or at least so that when it did come in, that I would be prepared to, you know, get it, my milk supply to dry up as fast as possible. Because, I mean, there's already so many triggers and reminders after loss. I mean, obviously, if anyone who's given birth or anything like that, you know, know that there's a lot of bleeding afterwards. So, I mean, obviously, that in and of itself is a reminder. Then, you know, your deflated bump is a reminder every time you look in the mirror. And then when, you know, you have <laughs> your milk come in, it's just another thing that you really don't want to have happen. And we were kind of left making, like, a frantic call to, the, to an on-call nurse to find out what to do. Um, but obviously not a, not a good situation. Yeah. So I think that's like one night, obviously we'll remember it for multiple reasons, but that was like one of those things that just kind of happened and obviously nobody knew what to do with it. The other thing is support groups and there's kind of multiple ways that you go about this and it just kind of depends on your personality and, and what you need at the time. But Natalie found that books were really helpful. Neither one of us are really readers, but um, she did find that books were helpful, and I don't know if there were, I, th I think there were like one or two, right, specific mm -hmm. books, so I don't know, you still remember the names of them from I'm the sure. description of the yeah. book down below, and then um, social media, I really try to get her to stay off of social media because I, I feel like it's, you know, going on and reading Yelp reviews, you only, in a lot of cases, you hear about the really bad stories, you don't always hear about the good stories, but she has found solace in that and also it, it's helped her because she's got a few people who she connected with and and they've been actually kind of longer running relationships than I would have ever expected. 
Um, the other thing is local groups. So we were lucky enough locally to have a group named Kindermorn. I, I doubt that that's like a, I know it's not a chain per se, but I don't know whether the name is used in other cities. Uh, basically, what we were able to do is go in and have a couple one-on-one -on -one sessions with a counselor who specifically deals in that type of grief. Um, if you go to any other counselors and, uh, you know, I, I don't know whether you would get that kind of specific attention, but that was helpful. And then that group also had actual kind of support groups. So you could go in and we met a few people, a few families. Uh, they went through something either similar with either losing a pregnancy or losing a baby after birth and it kind of helps because you realize that you know you're not crazy type of deal so um, I'm more social than she is I think she really obviously everybody again deals with grief in their own ways but we both found the support groups helpful mm -hmm. and we've also again stayed in contact with with those people but I think unfortunately the system is probably built to not give you all this information because the, the medical system's built in a way that they want to get you in and out as quickly as possible and kind of collect their money. But remember that you need to make the decisions that are right for you, not right for the doctors. Yeah. So don't just take whatever they say and, and just kind of go with it. Think on it. You know, again, everybody's situation is different, but I don't really think ours was dire. And looking back on it, we probably wish that maybe we would have taken a day or a day and a half to really think. think on it and figure out, again, what is is really the best path forward for us. Yeah. And then another thing I want to add, because um, I just thought of it. So when we asked for the footprints, um, she gave the footprints to him. And then we didn't know until one day I was looking through all the stuff that we got where the footprints were in the folder. And she had stuck in there um, that... The hospital we went to you can send in a request and they'll um, make you like a little placard and write your child's name and with little footprints on it and again she didn't say anything about it so had we not looked at it you know it would have been something we would have missed and not received so there's little things like that that you know I really hold on to especially because we didn't we don't have his remains um, so just make sure you know you ask or look through all the paperwork that they give you because there might be something like that that your hospital may offer um, and then along the lines of like the support groups you know there's lots of different ones out there that you can join um, like like Ari was saying, you know, I found them very helpful. And then there's also certain organizations, you know, that will send you um, things. So we um, got, there's an organization out there, they'll knit your baby a hat um, based on the size of when you lost your child. And so that was nice to receive something like that. Um, because, you know, when you go through a loss, you know, having anything, because you don't have your baby, having anything that you can kind of hold um, is very helpful. Um, and So we're, we're going to try and have some other, again, some other videos on like these little blurbs that every time we sit down, we're like, oh, we'll, we'll be able to crack that out in five minutes. But and then they end up being 12 or 15 minute videos. So we're trying to make them a little bit shorter. Uh, but again, really just trying to bring together any of the things that we either learned from the good side of things or learned from the bad side of things. So again, please let us know if you have any questions in the comments below. And um, we haven't finalized exactly what the upcoming videos are. We've got a couple of options, but stay tuned. And thanks for joining again. Until next time. I lost my best friend to 23. She left her body.